I-23 male have always been a disappointment to my dad. I think he was barely tolerating me. I didn't enjoy sports or any manly activities that he liked. I enjoyed dressing up and doing makeup with my mom. And as I got older, I enjoyed the more traditionally feminine activities, and he hated that. As soon as my brothers were born, he just kind of ignored me. The last straw for him was last month when I came out to him. I've been out to my mother since I was 16, but have always hidden it from my father for obvious reasons, but was sick of hiding it and just wanted to be open about it, so I didn't have to worry about keeping it a secret. My mom helped me tell him, but he still freaked out, yelling and screaming at me to get out and live somewhere else, so I packed up and left. Yesterday, I got a call from my dad sounding very defeated, asking me to come back since they need the money. I was helping pay rent and utilities, and now they're having trouble with money. I refused to go back and hung up. My mom has been supportive and doesn't think I should come back with how he's acted and says they'll just have to figure it out. But I am getting texts and calls from my grandparents, uncle, and aunt calling me an idiot because this affects my pre-tween and teen brothers. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Guess what, you bigot? The pot of gold was at the end of the rainbow, and you kicked that out of the house. Tell him that your money is just as gay as you are, so we couldn't possibly accept it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Why don't your grandparents, uncle, and aunt help your parents if they're so worried about your siblings? I'm sure they could come up with what corresponds to your rent between them. Your father chose to be an idiot and kick you out, and it's too late to take it back. He wasn't supportive of his son, so he got what was coming to him. If you want to send some money home via your mother to help with your brothers, that'd be a mitzvah, but you're under no obligation. And I know you know this, but you always deserved a dad who was supportive of you and your interest, and it sucks that you didn't get one. I'm sorry. Big love from a fellow queer. Wow, what a disappointment of a parent. I don't support you, but you need to come back and support me financially. No, your dad will have to figure it out. The real man can step it up and get a second job. Real men don't need help paying their bills, especially from those feminine men. I wouldn't send any money home. It's his responsibility. Yeah, dad is suffering from the effects of his toxic masculinity. What kills me is that dad and his family aren't sorry for how he acted. They're sorry OP isn't dishing out money. OP, you are a person, not a bank. And I hope you can surround yourself with people who care about you, like your mom. My wife has OCD. She's on medication, but there are still things that she's extremely particular about. One part of this is where she puts things. She has certain things in specific places. For example, she has the silverware in a certain drawer and the coffee table pressed to the side of the wall, the coffee maker below the coffee cups. She also works from home and is often in meetings. This is how she operates and generally gets through the day. There's a specific place for everything and a reason, and it's convenient. Frankly, I think these spots are where most people keep their things. Mom was coming down to where I live, visiting my siblings and me. She was staying with us, and usually this isn't an issue, but Mom continues to move things around the house, like the things I've mentioned. She moved the coffee maker and the cups apart so they could hang where there are hooks on the wall. The opposite side is the coffee maker. She moved the coffee table to the center of the room and rearranged all the plates and cups. She's putting my wife's pen, paper, notebooks, and laptop all in her office in different places, so my wife has to rummage around to find them. Mom keeps closing the blinds, making it dark and gloomy in the house. This gets my wife overwhelmed and has a more significant impact than how simple it seems and her sidetracked from work because now she has to find everything and put it back. This has been happening for the past three days. Each time mom does it, I tell her to put it back and then she gets mad at me, saying this is where everything should be and she's just helping us. I stayed firm and told her to put it back. She does, but once I leave, it's back to where I told her not to put it. It's starting to irritate me and my wife is getting really frustrated with this. I don't think she or I can handle this for two weeks. Today, mom moved my wife's office desk to the other side of the room, away from all the cabinets she has stored for her work things. This was it. I profusely told her to move it back and why. I told her that she'd have to stay with my sister or find a hotel. 
She got really mad at my wife and me and told me she couldn't believe we were so selfish and not to appreciate her help. Then she said if she's not appreciated, she'll leave. She left, but now I'm getting blasted from my sister and my brother saying that I was an idiot for kicking her out. And this is just how she shows affection. I don't think I'm an idiot. We opened our home to her, which is already kind of a lot. It's our home and we should feel comfortable in our home. And our setup was comfortable for both of us. Not the idiot. Even if your wife didn't have OCD, your mother doesn't get to decide where things belong in your home. Your wife has OCD and you repeatedly told your mother to stop moving things, which makes her 100% the idiot. It would be one thing if she put a coffee cup in the wrong place. Instead, she moved a desk to the other side of the room just because she could. I'd have kicked her out and banned her from returning to my house if she were my mother. I think OP's mom's love language is intentionally messing around with the OCD lady my son married. The fact that she's deliberately rearranging things after being explicitly told not to is a huge sign of disrespect. Whether or not OP's wife has OCD, who goes into someone else's house and moves their home office around? OP's mom had no reason to be in the wife's office at all, let alone moving her office around, except to exert control over space that isn't hers to control or cause trouble. This isn't love. This is an attempt to establish dominance. Mom got to have it her way when OP still lived at home and now expects to show the wife that she's still in charge. Good for OP on saying that there are boundaries she's crossing and protecting the wife. It doesn't matter what the siblings think. You don't have to hate mom, but crossing boundaries has consequences. Simply, mother, I love you, but this behavior is unacceptable, is enough. There's a big age gap between my sister and me. So when I was 12, I became an aunt and my nephew was born the day before my birthday. I'm turning 21 this year and my nephew's becoming a tween. Since he was born, my family just did joint birthdays, but they were clearly always directed towards my nephew and had to be kid appropriate. It sucked turning 16 and 18 and having my birthday party be a kid's party. I figured this year, as I'm turning 21 and we haven't had birthday parties for like two years, I'd finally have my own party. So I texted my sister and parents and told them I wanted to go to this restaurant with fantastic reviews on their food and cocktails for my birthday. I don't want to get smashed. I've drank before, but I wanted to dress nice and have a fancy dinner and drinks for my birthday with my family. Unfortunately, it was a unanimous no as it wasn't child friendly for my nephew's birthday. I tried to negotiate. I'll pay for my food and my drink. I'll pitch in towards the bill. We can go on a different day so my nephew also gets his own birthday. Oh, no, no, no. Joint party or nothing. Honestly, I probably have kept some of this pent up, but I texted them that it was BS that I haven't gotten to have my birthday, a me day, since my nephew was born. I never get to choose anything, theme, cake, food. It's 100% my nephew's day, except I get my name in the birthday song and the gifts. I get that this sounds spoiled, and I know it's 100% a first world problem, but I think the root of it is that since my nephew was born, I've been the runner-up regarding my birthday. It feels like I got put on the back burner for the shiny new baby, and I've carried that from age 12 to today. I tried to explain this to my sister, but she said I'm being selfish, and that since our birthdays are so close together, it makes more sense to have joint parties, and I need to get over my jealousy of my nephew. I'm not jealous of my nephew. It's not his fault, but I want to have my 21st birthday to be my birthday. I feel torn between wanting to be selfish and berating myself for being selfish. Am I the idiot? I'm so upset that I haven't gotten my birthday since my nephew was born. Edit. My 16th birthday was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle themed and my 18th was Transformers themed. While it's not a big deal, teenage me thought this was the end of the world. Wow, not the idiot. Joint party or nothing? I'd choose nothing and then do my own thing after giving my nephew his gift the day before. Honestly, this is ridiculous. Your sister's hijacked your celebration for her child and made you an afterthought. You deserve your own birthday. Unfortunately, they're the ones being selfish and lazy. 
they're acting like your birthday is an inconvenience for them. Generally speaking, having to share my birthday stories are annoying and whiny as crap, and there's rarely a good point. Congratulations, you have the rare story where you have a good point. Your 21st birthday should take priority over a kid's birthday, which is not even a thing. Your family's doing you dirty. I would say skip the kid party and go out and do the town. Your sister's the one who's selfish, since I'm pretty sure she got a 21st birthday bash without having to share it with the elementary school. You're not being even slightly whiny. Your family are idiots. It's reasonable to want a 21st birthday party for you alone. In my opinion, it's totally reasonable for any birthday, but the big ones particularly. I would, however, stop expecting your family to participate. They've chosen. Get your friends to take you out on your actual birthday. Go to dinner with them instead of spending it with your family. I, female 18, turned 18 in early August. For my 18th birthday, I wanted to go out and celebrate with my family by going to my favorite Chinese restaurant. I'm a quite picky eater. I'm autistic and have issues with textures, but any type of Asian food is a safe food for me. However, when it comes to more Western cuisine, I don't have a lot of options unless I make it at home. Everything was organized and ready to go, but a week before my birthday, my brother's fiance, Vicky, female 27, said she couldn't go. She said she had a seafood allergy, and after contacting the restaurant, they said they really couldn't cater to her and politely advised that she doesn't eat there. Vicky and my brother suggested we go to this Italian restaurant instead. Everyone was on board, but I hate Italian food. The textures of cheese, pasta, and all of it are gross to me. I got upset because it was supposed to be a dinner for my birthday, and it was like I got forgotten about. I talked to my parents who told me to stop complaining. Vicky can't help having an allergy. I sucked it up and went. I spent my birthday miserable and just sneaked my snacks into the restaurant. Last weekend, I spontaneously went to my brother's house with no warning because I had forgotten my hoodie from there a few days prior. My brother let me inside, and I saw Vicky sitting on the couch, scoffing tuna like it was nobody's business. Me. I thought you were allergic to seafood. Vicky. What are you talking about? Me. My 18th birthday last month. You said we couldn't go to the Chinese restaurant because you're allergic to seafood. Vicky. Well, I'm not medically allergic. I just can't stand the smell of all those shrimps and prawns. It makes me feel nauseous. Me. So you ruined my 18th birthday because you don't like how seafood smells? Wow. I stormed out and blocked Vicky and my brother on everything. I couldn't believe this. I talked to my parents. They thought I was being dramatic and that it was just a restaurant and told me to apologize to Vicky for speaking to her like that in her home. I was so angry. I went to stay with my boyfriend's family for a few days who kindly let me stay. My family thinks I went super overboard and are calling me a brat and entitled. I don't know how to feel. Was I the idiot? Not the idiot. First of all, as you said, it was your birthday. The right thing to do was for Vicky to not attend or to arrange with the restaurant to be allowed to bring her own food. She's not your blood relative, so she didn't have to be there. It's not okay that your parents let your brother and his girlfriend pick a restaurant you didn't like. You should ask them to take you out again to a restaurant of your choosing. Yes, you are angry about this, and I don't blame you. No one listened to you. Your parents let Vicky ruin your birthday. Now people are still dismissing and minimizing what you're saying. That would annoy anyone. I think brother must be the golden child or is helping the parents financially. So to keep your brother happy, you must keep his wife happy. Or they're trying for a baby and the parents don't want hassles to happen. Does the family not care that she lies to get her way? And the brother knew she was lying? It's not about the restaurant. It's about her lying to make OP's birthday about her and her preferences. This is classic favoritism and gaslighting. OP had every right to be angry, especially as his brother, this chick's husband, allowed that to happen. Faking a medical issue to outshine someone's actual medical issue is disgusting. 18 is a milestone birthday, too. OP, make sure you order Chinese takeout with an extra helping of prawn and shrimp and have it delivered to you at Vicky and your bro's wedding. She ruined your day with her food choices, so it's only fair you return the favor. Not the idiot, not even in the slightest. 
I have a feeling Vicky being manipulative to get what she wants will be a recurring theme, unfortunately. I, 36 male, and my wife, 32, have three kids. Two are adopted, pre-tween male and female, and one is our biological kid, younger female. I work in family medicine and have my own clinic, and my wife is a stay-at-home mom. I go to the gym every morning from 4 to 5 a.m., then take our two dogs for a walk at 5.30 a.m., feed the dogs, cook breakfast, and wash dishes. I go to the clinic at around 8 a.m. and come home at 8 p.m. I cook dinner and wash dishes while my wife puts the kids to bed. I mow the garden and clean the bathrooms too. I usually buy groceries while coming home from work. My wife homeschools the kids, cleans the house, cooks lunch and brings it to my clinic, washes the dishes in the afternoon, does laundry, pays bills, takes the dogs for an evening walk, feeds them, and all the other work at home. Yesterday, my wife said she wanted to cook breakfast for the kids and me as it was a Sunday, and we were all free. So I did my usual gym routine, took the kids and dogs to the park, and then fed the dogs. I also gave my car to the mechanic. By the time all this was done, it was almost 9 a.m. The kids were starting to get hungry, and so was I. I went to the kitchen to check what my wife was doing. She had not started cooking because her childhood friends had called her. So I asked her if I should make breakfast, and she said that she'd be coming in a few minutes. Half an hour later, she was still on the call. So I cut up fruits for the kids to snack on while I made some chocolate waffles, bacon, and eggs. Also a glass of milk for each of the kids and a cup of coffee for myself. When my wife got off the call, it was 12.30 p.m., the kids and I were watching Hotel Transylvania, eating popcorn, candy, chicken nuggets, and pizza. She got mad when she saw the food in the kitchen. She asked me to come to our bedroom. Then she started saying that I was very disrespectful by cooking breakfast despite her having told me already that she wanted to cook today. I told her she could still cook lunch, but she said that the kids were eating junk food now and they won't be hungry until at least 3 p.m. She refused to eat breakfast and said she was going with her sister for sushi. Before going, she told me, since you don't need me to cook, you can make lunch and dinner too. Am I the idiot? Did she expect you to wait three hours for breakfast? So what? Your wife really needs to check Google for breakfast time. I think she was looking for an argument. Not the idiot, OP. Not to mention, she could easily multitask if she wanted to catch up with a friend and make breakfast. Put the phone on speaker and throw some headphones in while making pancakes. It's not like we're in the 70s and you're attached to a wall. No, she expected the kids to starve themselves while waiting for her to chat away on the phone. Then she got the audacity to be mad because their dad didn't neglect them like how she wanted. What a dreadful woman. I wonder if this isn't the first time she starves their kids. She seems completely nonchalant about it. This is a good point. Who knows if the kids are getting her dedicated time and attention on the weekdays? Homeschooling is one area where you can't afford to slack off. It's completely normal that the wife would want a break on the weekend, but delaying the kids' breakfast to talk on the phone for hours is not okay. Everyone's the idiot here. Wife for obvious reasons, but you feeding kids chocolate waffles, eggs, bacon, and fruit at 9.30 a.m. and popcorn, candy, chicken nuggets, and pizza three hours later and that was snacks and not considered a full lunch? Wow, my teenage boy would strain to eat that much. Dude, a couple of slices of pizza is lunch for a young child, just on its own. Same with the nuggets and popcorn. Your wife was wrong about the rest of it, but she was right that she didn't need to make lunch for the kids.